Hi guys, so I recently have been on a Sagittarius Shawty kick and have been literally binge watching her videos for the past 6 months. And I decided that I wanted to make a video about her. Similar to my video about Alina Karimova, I want to express not only my intrigue with her, but also why I feel she has that intrigue. And again, I want to add a disclaimer that everything I say in this video is my opinion based on what I see and some light research and to please take everything I say with a grain of salt. So without further ado, let's go! So I first want to touch on Saji's background, and I'll be referring to Sagittarius Shorty as Saji because I find that that's kind of like the nickname that she's both given to herself and how a lot of her viewers, including myself, refer to her. So I'll be referring to her as Saji. I first discovered Saji's channel about 2 or 3 years ago. I forgot what video I first saw, but I was instantly intrigued with her and found her quite entertaining and funny. Not only that, but there were some things I found also quite paradoxical about her. She's a mix of things, both likeable and funny, and also questionable and problematic. Her most notable videos are her Tinder date videos where she would get ready and go to a random dude's house that she just met on Tinder or some other dating app and drink and ultimately hook up. So that's really all the background I'm gonna cover with her, but now I really want to go into why I find her so intriguing. The first thing that comes up in my mind is her stark rawness, and what I mean by that is while I do think she's exaggerating to some degree because who doesn't on YouTube, she is very raw, so much so it's kind of baffling because it's like, um, this is the internet, millions of people see this. Like when she goes to the bathroom and you can hear it was the bathroom. Or when she talks about certain acts she did in great detail. But I don't think she cares all that much and in a way it's quite admirable. And you can see this with subtle things too like how she doesn't really do much editing with her videos. Because a lot of people, including myself, edit her videos to censor out like weird pauses or awkward wording because I feel like that's kind of proper YouTube etiquette that a lot of us has been accustomed to. And Saji does not do that and in a way it sets her apart from others. She also says and does things that are problematic and off-putting. She doesn't do all of them per se in her videos, but she mentioned things that happen in her life that make viewers like myself go, hmm, well that's a little problematic. So it's pretty obvious that she says a lot of off-putting and borderline offensive things. I also want to add some of the things that are clearly visible in her videos. For example, her lack of hygiene. She often goes a while without brushing her teeth as she self-admittedly has, well, admitted. Her hair looks often greasy in her videos, her room is usually messy, and she's not only obese, but she keeps on putting on weight that will only further harm her health. Another thing too is that she is very open about herself and what goes on in her life. Parasocial relationships are a key component of YouTubers' connections with their audience. You feel like you're a friend of hers listening to her rants and things going on in her life, so you can't help but feel kind of close to her, and entertained in a way. Like having a friend who is constantly having boy problems that doesn't do anything to resolve it. To have that parasocial relationship, YouTubers have to be open and vulnerable to some degree, and Saji is very open about herself. Almost too open to the point where it's either borderline embarrassing or she puts herself in some kind of danger. And another thing I feel like plays into her success is her fitting the new age problematic archetype. And what I mean by that is kind of like, it's kind of like a Dan Danielle Bregoli way. I mean, trashy reality shows have been popular for the past few decades now. Now, more notably Gypsy Bride, 90 Day Fiance, and then the spinoffs associated with it. Now, going off that, there are also problematic people that appear on shows like Dr. Phil. Or even going back to 90 Day Fiance, there's notable people like Big Ed and Colt that are just... Oh my god. And it draws a lot of people in, and for good reason. It's baffling morally questionable and it's kind of like a guilty pleasure to watch 
for the audience. Sanji fits into that mold to some degree, and she says and does these outlandish things, including getting into random fights when she goes out, and for which she did serve some jail time. And you hear about them in her videos, and you're just like, what? And it's a different spin on it too, because while you don't see the action a lot of the time, you often hear from a first person perspective. It's like a one man reality show at times, and it actually draws in people to watch. And another thing, a sadder thing really, is I feel for her. She opens up in quite a bit of her videos about what happened to her growing up. She faced a lot of bullying and on top of that, the death of her mother at a very young age. And she's had to develop these coping mechanisms that molded her into who she is and how she thinks today. With all these things and more, she obviously is dealing with a lot of unresolved trauma. Saji also deals with alcoholism, mental health issues, eating and weight issues including PCOS, which causes you to gain weight. And constantly putting herself in dangerous situations like she does when she has flings with these random men. Sadly enough, this fuels one of her most popular videos on her channel, her Tinder date vlogs. There was a comment on one of her more recent videos addressing the Kenny situation, which I am not going to go into detail here, but if you want to know about the situation, I highly recommend this video. Go ahead and watch it. I've watched it and I feel like I'm pretty caught up with the situation. And I'm going to insert this comment here because I think it highlights what I feel Saji deals with. And Saji hardened the comment and others like it, so she is clearly aware of herself and her traumas to a certain degree. And in other past videos, I've seen her heart comments with a similar message, so I think she's been aware for a while. She also talks a lot about getting a therapist and getting on different kinds of medication to treat her anxiety and other mental health issues that she struggles with. I think she wants to help herself deep down but she keeps on relapsing into her old ways and not making any real progress. I've seen this about a year ago when she tried to go sober, but a couple months later she relapsed and kept drinking. But she did move into a condo recently, which helps her somewhat with being independent and things, but mentally I'm not sure where she's at. So in conclusion, Saji is a YouTuber who, while I find her entertaining and funny, I also think is problematic. She makes choices and decisions that not only put her in danger, but also causes a lot of detriment to herself and others. I hope one day she heals completely from the inside out. And I hope that same thing for others, including myself. So that is my video. It is rather short, but I think I made my points clear and concise. Thank you all for watching, and until the next time I make a video. Bye-bye.